The ear is an important organ that not only assists in hearing, but also helps the body maintain balance. It can be divided into three sections. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer and middle ear structures assist only in hearing, while the inner ear also helps to maintain the body's equilibrium. The outer ear comprises a funnel-like structure called the pinna and an S-shaped tube called the external auditory meatus. Very fine hairs and wax-secreting sebaceous glands are present on the skin of the pinna and the meatus, which prevent dust and small insects from entering the ear. The pinna is responsible for collecting vibrations in the air and directing sound into the meatus. The meatus further extends into the middle ear. The middle ear consists of an air-filled space called the tympanic cavity that separates the outer and inner ears. The tympanic cavity is bound externally by the tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum, and internally by an auditory capsule. The tympanic membrane is composed of connective tissue that is covered with skin on the outside and a mucous membrane on the inside. The auditory capsule, on the other hand, has two membrane-bound apertures called the oval window and the round window. The middle ear also has three small movable bones or ossicles called the malleus, incus and stapes on the floor of the tympanic cavity. These ossicles are attached to one another in a chain-like fashion. They increase the efficiency of transmission of sound waves to the inner ear. Air pressure also needs to be maintained on both sides of the eardrum for normal hearing. This is done by the eustachian tube which connects the tympanic cavity to the pharynx. The inner ear consists of a complex system of intercommunicating chambers and tubes called a labyrinth. The labyrinth consists of two functional parts, the cochlea, which is responsible for hearing, and the vestibular apparatus, which is responsible for balance. The labyrinth is of two types, bony and membranous. The bony labyrinth is a series of channels filled with a fluid called perolymph, while the membranous labyrinth lies within the bony labyrinth and is filled with endolymph. The cochlea is the coiled portion of the bony labyrinth and is also known as the auditory section of the inner ear. The cochlea in turn has two membranes, namely Rissner's membrane and the basilar membrane. Rissner's membrane and the basilar membrane divide the bony labyrinth into an upper section called the scalar vestibuli and a lower section called the scalar tympani, which are both filled with perilymph. Coming to the membranous labyrinth, the space between the scalar vestibuli and scalar tympani is called the scalar media and is filled with endolymph. The fluids in the labyrinth cushion the soft structures and conduct waves from the middle ear to the organ of corti. The organ of corti, located in the scalar media, is the actual receptor of sound. It is composed of hair cells that act as auditory receptors. 
Above the row of hair cells lies a thin elastic membrane called the tectorial membrane. Each hair cell has cilia on an apical part which are in contact with the tectorial membrane whose basal end is in contact with afferent nerve fibers. The inner ear also contains a complex system called the vestibular apparatus that helps maintain the body's balance. It is located above the cochlea and consists of three semicircular canals and the otolith organ which consists of the saccule and utricle. Each semicircular canal is C-shaped, lies at right angles to the other two and is suspended in the perilymph. The swollen base of these canals is called the ampulla, which contains a sensory spot called the crista ampullaris. The saccule and utricle also contain a sensory spot called the macula. Both crista and macula contain hair cells that act as receptors of the vestibular apparatus and are responsible for maintaining the body's balance and posture. Now we'll see how the ears enable us to perceive sounds. The external ear receives sound waves and directs them to the eardrum. The eardrum vibrates in response to sound waves and transmits them through the ear ossicles, the malleus, incus and stapes to the oval window. The ossicles in turn amplify the sound and pass the vibrations through the oval window to the fluid of the cochlea. This generates waves in the lymph that induces a ripple in the basilar membrane. The vibrations of the basilar membrane then bend the hair cells, pressing them against the tectorial membrane. The hairs move back and forth against the tectorial membrane, which stimulates the hair cells or receptor cells. As a result, the hair cells generate nerve impulses which are transmitted along afferent nerve fibers and auditory nerves to the auditory cortex of the brain. The brain then interprets these nerve impulses and sound is recognized. In this manner, the ear forms an important part of the auditory system and also helps us maintain our balance.